Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to transfer data from Excel into meaning tab and how you can do some basic uh, descriptive statistical calculations in mini tab. All uh, right, let's open our mini tab. As you can see, whenever you launch your mini tab, it is going to create one worksheet, empty worksheet for you. One simple way to transfer your data from your Excel to mini tab is simply copying and pasting it. All right, so I just selected my data um, from Excel. I come over here, starting from C1 column, I paste my information into it. You see that it successfully transferred everything that I had from Excel into Minitab. Uh, and let's assume you would like to transfer other worksheets into Minitab and just keep this as identical as the Excel file. What you can do here, there's a plus sign right next to worksheet one. You can click on it. It is going to create a different worksheet and you will repeat the operation, right? And then you just come over here, select these two columns, right? And then go to any tab and paste them here. All right, and one more. We do have three different worksheets. And let's do the same thing for the beach data. And that's it. Uh, so this is just one way of transferring uh, data in the Excel file into Minitab. Um, there is a different way. And to show it that way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just without even storing it, delete the entire Minitab and reopen Minitab. Um, and then I'm going to show you the different way, another way of, of transferring your entire worksheet uh, into, into Minitab. Um, so what you can do, uh, is go to file and go to open worksheet and go to the Excel file that you would like to transfer data from. In this case, uh, in my Excel file's name is called control charts. I selected it and I hit open. It gives the option to select uh, multiple different worksheets in the same Excel workbook. In this case, I'm going to transfer all three. And after I cut import, uh, and Minitab is going to transfer whatever I have in the Excel data. As you can see, it did not transfer this comment section, text box section that I had on the worksheet one and the worksheet two. Right? It just copied the data that I had in my cells. Well, either way is fine, okay? Um, whichever way you feel comfortable, you may use that way, all right? so. Let's get right into it then. So let's assume I would like to do some simple calculations in, in Minitab. How do I do that? Let's assume uh, for each subgroup, I would like to take a look at the average of my observation of the pain thickness I have on that day. And let's assume I would like to calculate the averages here and then you know, show them here on this column C7. Well, a Minitab has nice um, function call calculator. Well, this is going to be um, row statistics. So let's go into row statistics. And let me show you how you can do it in, in Minitab. You can see there are already some functions, pre-built functions in Minitab. In this case, I would like to take the average of my observations and I select all my observations after I make sure that I click on mean and I would like to store my results in C7 and I hit okay. And that's it. So you can just come over here and just say that I'm just keeping my mean here, right? It did the trick for you, all right? And let's assume you would like to also store the range information for each of the ratios, right? And how you do it is in, uh, in Excel, there's no built-in function for that. Um, but what you can do here is you can take a look at the maximum out of five and you can subtract the minimum of this five from it. And then that will give you your range. In this case, the maximum value here is 108 and the minimum value here is 93 for this subgroup one. And the difference between these two is 7, 15, right? It should be 15 that's coming here. 
but of course I would like to do it for all subgroups. So in that case, you go to again, calculate, uh, and then you just go to row statistics. This time you wanna do range and over these observations, five different observations. This time I'd like to keep it under C8, right? So and hit okay. You can see that uh, it did the trick for you. All right. Um, so you can also do the calculations on columns. If you would like to do it that way, you can go to column statistics and let's assume that you will want to take average of um, observation one only. And then you'll like to store the result. Well, let's not store it because it's just going to be a single number. Meantime is going to display it on the screen. Let's hit okay. As you can see, this screen turned out that uh, it can be changed. And then it is basically giving me the average of observation ones across all my subgroups. Um, I'm not sure whether you will ever need that, but just in case you need it, you can just come over here and do it that way. If you go to calculator, calculator is much more generic. You can create much more generic expressions by using all these built-in functions and these simple calculations. Um, of course, it's going to give you the expression. You can select them and then do all your expression. You can generate your own formula here and then you tell Minitab where you would like to store this new information and you can do the calculations, all right? Um, okay, so um, another uh, basic uh, descriptive statistics that I would like to show you is literally the, the basic descriptive statistic itself. So you go to a stats tab and the first menu has basic statistics. Um, you know, I would like to get a good look at the mean, uh, the maximum value, minimum value range, process if I have a chance, standard deviation and variance. Well, the first menu under stats basic statistics that's called a display descriptive statistics. If you hit that, uh, you see that you do have multiple different options. Let's say that I'm interested in again, observation one, observation two, observation three, four, and five, I do not want to you know, uh, divide these observations by any variable. So this is optional, you can um, do it like that. If you go to statistics tab, it gives the option to, these are default options. So it's going to give me mean, standard error of the mean, standard deviation, first quartile, median, third quartile. Let's click on variance. I like to see variance as well. Let's click on mode if there it is available let's see let's see the range um and these are all bunch of other uh information that you can get let's take a look at ketosis and skinness as well all right i hit okay um and there are some graphs menu that can come with that data as well so if you like to see the histogram of your data which is something really good or histogram plus the normal curve it's going to do some normal normality testing um, you can just click on that data as well. The backs plot can come with this. Uh, so let's select that. Um, and then let's, okay. Well, you know what? I'm just going to disable these plots for now. Uh, and then I can come back and activate it later. And hit okay. Uh, what you see here, let's disable this spreadsheet first. And let's take a look at, good look at the information that MATLAB gives us. So it gives us a good table, nice looking table. And um, for each observation one through five, it gives me all the basic statistics that I will ever need. What you can do here, you can keep um, this information on the left menu, or you can just go here, copy this and then paste it somewhere else. Copy as a picture and paste it somewhere else. Um, if you're writing a report, it's a nice way to you know, store information. Let me go back to the same menu that I showed you. Stats, basic statistics, display descriptive statistics. This time, put some graphs into it. And I like histogram data with normal curve. I like to see a box plot of the data. And also let's start to plot individual variable plot as well. All right, so let's see what it gives us. All right, so um, this generated a different 
tab on the left, again, the top portion seems same, but if you scroll down, you see that it is the histogram with normal curve with observation one. And it is telling me that although this data looks like a bell curve, we, have, we cannot be sure because we don't see the statistic, the p-value of this test, but it does give me the histogram and then the, the fitted bell curve comes from it. And it does give me the same histogram data. Let me uh, disable that spreadsheet tab for a moment for each other observations. Um, and then what else it does give me? It does give me uh, individual value plot for observation one. Basically it is showing, this is the dot plot. Um, it is showing me that there are numerous uh, observations in observation one values accumulating in the section. Uh, it basically gives me, you know, uh, some information about the range itself. Um, and then it does give me nice box plot for observation one, two, three, four, five. Uh, as you can see, um, and this is the first quartile, median, third quartile, and this is the minimum, and this is the maximum information on the box plot. And these are already good amount of information that I can uh, use to define my data set. Um, and whenever you would like to do some initial basic um, descriptive statistic analysis, instead of doing it manually in Excel or in other platforms, Unitab can do that for you with a couple clicks, all right? Um, I would like to also show you another feature of basic statistical calculations uh, on Unitab. Under the same menu, stats, basic statistics, and go to graphical summary, this is just a different way of looking at the basic descriptive statistics. Let's assume that I would like to take a good look at the five different observations across my samples. And I don't want to um, divide the data by any variable so you can leave this section all empty. And uh, by default, it comes with 95% confidence interval on the statistics that's going to give me. I will just leave it as it is and I hit okay. I like this uh, feature a lot because it does give me um, the box plot uh, rotated um, uh, horizontally this time, right? The box plot of the data, and it does give me a good histogram and fitted bell curve, and it does give me the 95% confidence interval on the mean and the median. And what else you can see here is nice uh, statistics, right? So you do see this time the p value of this normality test. And remember, if you ever taken a test course, you would remember this, but if you have not, that's okay. If you do a normality test, this time uh, Minitab implemented Anderson Darling normality test. And it tells me that the p-value is 0 0.458. It is basically telling me that I should fail to reject my null hypothesis, which suggests that the data is coming from a normal distribution. Basically, I'm just, telling myself that there is not good enough information or evidence to suggest that this data is not normal. So I will stick to my assumption that this data is coming from normality. And the other statistics are nice. Those are the stats that you know I selected for the basic statistical descriptions, all right? So when I did it um, in the other way around. So I just clicked on this display descriptive statistic and selected this kurtosis. And scaleness uh, as an extra tool, remember? You could get it that way, but you can also get it by going to stats, basic statistics, and graphical summary. I really like this graphical summary option a lot. And it gives you a whole bunch of information on the same one. So let's see if there is any observation that is not normal. Again, the p-value is larger than 0 0.05. Remember, our confidence interval was 95%. Therefore, our alpha level of significance is 5%. And we compare our p-value against, uh, against our alpha value, right? Um, again, the p-value is larger than 0 0.05, larger than 0 0.05. Uh, this is very close. Uh, p-value here is 0 0.088. If it was below 0 0.05, we would have a statistical evidence that this data is not really coming from normal distribution, but in this case, um, it's very close, uh, but not against that. 
Okay, so uh, on the next video, I'm going to show you how you can do some control charting.